Alright. Wow. We got a big quotient here. So what we have is we have radical 4 times square root of 3 divided by 2 plus the square root of 5. Now, one thing I like to tell all my students is whenever you have a fraction, um, an easy way to get rid of that fraction is to multiply by what's on the denominator. And, you know, so if I had something like, uh, um, you know, x over 3 equals 7, well, to get rid of this fraction, I can multiply by 3 over 1, right? Kind of like the reciprocal of your denominator, but real multiply by the reciprocal of your denominator. That cancels out, you get x equals you know 21. So a lot of students automatically look at this and they say, oh well, let's multiply by you know 2 plus the square root of 5. It makes sense, that's what I've always told them. Well, it does always work, except when you're working now with um, two terms that are added subtracted, or a lot of times we're gonna put these in parentheses, what we call them, you know, a binomial. We don't have to put them in parentheses for it to be a binomial, but um, what I'm going to represent with this is a quick little example. Um, x plus 2 times x plus 2. Uh, you know, this is what we're going to call, you know, we call it a perfect square because when you multiply, when you factor this, x times x gives you x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4, which gives you x squared plus 4x plus 4. And so if I was going to multiply by this exact same binomial, I'm going to get now three terms, all right? I don't want to do that. However, an extra way, let's just write it below, if I do actually an x plus 2 times an x minus 2, there's something that's very important that's going to happen. I'm still going to have an x squared. I'm still going to have a, a negative 2x, and I'm going to have now a positive 2x. And then I'm going to have a negative 4 at the end. So what happens is now my middle terms are going to cancel to zero. So therefore, I'm left with an x squared minus 4. And that's a very important part because when you're dealing with a division, um, a radical number, more often than not, if you can't, you know, if it's not even, it's going to be give you, um, it's going to be an irrational number. It's going to go on and on. So you can't divide by something that doesn't end, right? I mean, it's, that's, you know, it's, it's like dividing by, you know, a rational number. It's not going to work. So what we need to do is we want to change it. We want to get rid of that square root. So we have to multiply it by something that's going to get rid of the square root. And, and that's going to give us you know, uh, our less terms. So the reason why multiplying by the square root of 5 doesn't work, that sounds dangerous. If I multiply the square root of 5, I have 2 square root of 5 times or plus 5. Because remember, you have to multiply by both of them. So again, that's not going to work. So what we do is we want to multiply by the conjugate, which is going to be 2 minus the square root of 5, and then 2 minus the square root of 5. And the reason why I multiply the top and the bottom is because you always have to keep your fractions exactly the same. So I multiply by 2 times square root of 5. Up top here, 2 times 2, or I'm sorry, on the bottom here, I get 4. Um, I already know that these two are going to cancel out, so eh, I'll just write them out. So it's going to be 2 times square root of 5 plus 2 times square root of 5. And then square root of 5 times square root of 5, 5 times 5 is 25. The square root of 25 is just going to leave me a negative 5. That was the bottom. Now I go up top. 4 times square root of 3 is going to be, times 2 is going to be 8 times square root of 3. And then minus 4. And whenever you're multiplying, you know, 4 radical 3 times a radical, you can multiply the numbers inside the radical, but the 4 has to stay outside. So it would be 4 times the square root of 15. So I multiply the outside numbers, and then you have your radical. So here, I can't, simplify, I can't uh, combine these. They don't have the same terms. All right? um, I can't simplify square root of 3. And radical 15, none of my square numbers go into there, so I can't simplify that. Then here, I'm going to have these two numbers are going to cancel out. Right? A negative 2 times square root of 5 plus 2 times square root of 5. So that's going to leave me 4 uh, minus a negative 5, which is going to leave me 9. So therefore, I'm left with 8 square root of 3 minus 4 square root of 15, 
all over nine. And that is going to be my final answer. So just remember, whenever you have a radical on the bottom, you have to multiply by a radical to get rid of that radical. You cannot have a radical, you cannot divide by a radical. But if it's a binomial, you're going to have to multiply by the conjugate. So if it's a plus, you multiply by the exact same, but in subtraction. And if it's a subtraction binomial, you're going to multiply by the exact same, but in addition. And make sure you do it on the top and bottom, and then obviously simplify your work. So that's how you simplify a uh, quotient with a radical on the bottom.